Karim believes that design should not be exclusive, produced only for the elite, but should be accessible to everyone. I always felt that design should be for everyone. So when I started open my practice in New York 16 years ago, I was determined to do some very mass-produced commodity and to really try to work with products that really touch everybody. I'm Karim Rashid, and I'm a designer who works globally. So in a way, you could argue that we're building all these kind of really kitsch stage sets that have absolutely nothing to do with the age in which we live in. It's strange. I find it very extremely perverse in a way. I mean, it'd be like, imagine right now, I'm sitting here on my laptop, and then I, oh, I gotta go out, I, what am I gonna do, get my horse and carriage? No, of course not. Pixels, basically, million, two million colors, we should really exploit and really, how can I say, celebrate, engage color. It's a beautiful, sensual phenomenon. You know, in general, uh, with uh, most of my work, I'm very interested in in kind of color and depth and texture and trying to really speak about this kind of digital age, about the three-dimensional world, really. I think that when we have things in our lives that really kind of elevate our human experience, it's an amazing feeling. I love, I love that moment in a way. Um, so, and to design those kind of objects and to kind of live with those objects, I think I always consider the objects almost as, as almost like de-stressors. I, I, I used that word 20 years ago about the idea of the object being a de-stressor, that if I bring something into my life, in a way it should make my life better, not worse. But inevitably, because you know, a, a lot of us accumulate a lot of things, and we have a lot of things in our lives that are really not bringing much meaning, where they become kind of obstacles in a way. And also I think to design a product or have a product that's not really an obstacle, it has to be in a way kind of relatively minimal. What can I do here? How can I put my fingerprint on it and differentiate itself from everybody else or every other designer in a way? And am I playing a game to show that I can differentiate? Or am I actually really doing something that is contributive? Because this the big issue here with design is, are the things we are doing really making an effect and making change? And for me, I, um, it's nothing better than to spend it in an eight, nine, ten hour working day where I move constantly from micro to macro. And I feel that as being even more so steeped in this, new, in this kind of information age and digital age, I don't really think, I never felt like I had any boundaries or borders, but now I think the world doesn't have any boundaries and borders. And I think many of us in the world are starting to become, in a sense, you could argue, a kind of global citizens. And I'm a big believer in trying to shape this new world, this world that I would consider not only more poetic, but kind of more softer and more casual and more lightweight and more immaterial. I mean, and now we're kind of at that, that moment, I think. We're at a, at a bit of a pinnacle um, where we're shifting from this kind of drab world and design is becoming such a public subject now that companies are starting to realize that design is going to give them uh, an edge or design is going to differentiate them from one brand to another or design can actually make more humanitarian consideration, more, more deal and make human life better. I decided one of my agendas was to really create what I call designocracy, which is really to democratize design. Design is what we can bring to everyday life, to human beings, but to have a more pleasurable, more interesting life. And these are the things that kind of, in a sense, give me energy, but hopefully they give other people energy. And, I, and that's, in a way, at the end of the day, I think every time I design something, I think about making other people's lives better. You know, I, I'm more interested in other people's lives being better than I'm interested in my own life. In fact, frankly, even though some people say I'm arrogant, I'm quite selfless. I'm not really, I'm here to design for the world. I'm not here to design uh, out of some sort of um, uh, selfish pleasure. Snow shovels, um, really, really uh, products that most people don't realize are designed. For people who, on one hand, they may be artists and they're painting, on the other hand, they're kind of building the industrial world. And so I always, that was part of my upbringing and I always felt that that's my kind of role and participation in the world will be to kind of touch every part of our physical environment. So I don't really see any boundaries between, you know, designing a shoe or, or designing a, a building or an interior. 70-80% of the world is completely impractical, 70-80% of the world is uncomfortable. You feel it. 
You know, you feel that hotel rooms are poorly designed. You sit in chairs that are very uncomfortable. And it's crazy, this. You know, imagine if you design a million chairs to date, or how many chairs have been done in the world, why on earth would we have an uncomfortable chair? There's like no excuse whatsoever.